when I was 19 years old, I began to work for a private company out in California. And they were focused on treatments and programs for children with dyslexia. My expertise is not just the assessment part of that, it really is what do you do when you figure out what the problem is. Because diagnoses don't tell you a thing about what to do. The real question to be answered is, how do you change the skills? Can we actually make the weaker skills stronger? So here's your first question of the day, all right? You are all capable of learning new information. We know that learning really means the brain makes new connections. So the question becomes, at what time in your life are you going to lose the ability to make these new connections? When does it stop happening? What age is that? Is that wishful thinking? <laughs> she says never. Could be true. There actually is one point in time when you're not going to be able to learn anything new. You're dead. No. That's it. When you're dead, which is the same as never, then you definitely cannot do any new learning. We now know that neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to wire itself and rewire itself, is capable of lifelong. But there's three key principles. It applies to anything that you're going to learn, which is the intensity of the practice, which means how much time per day do you practice this new activity. Besides intensity, the brain's learning is really driven by frequency in practice, which means how many days per week. If I told you, and we said, Barbara's going to learn Swahili. She's going to get a free Swahili lesson every Monday for one hour. We say, Vicky has won an all-expense-paid trip to Africa. She's going to live with a royal family for three months. Better deal. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, one problem, though, the African family speaks no English. They only speak Swahili. So Barbara could do a year of Mondays. Vicky could go do three months and come back, and guess who's going to be more fluent? Yeah, how come? What's the differential factor there? Frequency and intensity. It's intensity, it's frequency, and it's the explicitness of the instruction. That's the third principle, it's how explicit. They're going to teach you the basics first. It doesn't really help her to know how to say, see you later, if she doesn't know how to say bathroom. They want to teach you the more core elements first, and then the more fine-tuned ones later on. So intensity of the instruction, frequency of, frequency of instruction, and the developmental specificity of the instruction are three key principles we know that rewires the brain. Doesn't matter if we're talking about children, elementary school, middle school, high school, college or adult, we're talking about the brain, and that applies across all the ages of the population. Medicare even knows this. If you have an injury to your body and you're in the hospital and say you need speech therapy or you need PT, guess how often you're gonna get it? Daily, six days a week. Medicare almost mandates it has to happen six days a week. Why? Why do they care? What's going to happen if you get therapy six days a week? You will be discharged soon. They will spend less money, and you'll still have a higher functional outcome. So Medicare even knows that some of these medical rehab situations, intensity and frequency also lead to better recovery and faster recovery.